for my 300th review produced, I wanted to tackle childhood classic. This of course is Daytona USA, developed by Sega AM2, published by Sega, and released in the arcades during the 1990s, before being ported to the Sega Saturn and Windows computers. For those who are too young to know what a Sega Saturn is, let alone were not around in the 90s, good god you're making me feel old, the Sega Saturn was a complicated and failed console by Sega to be their next generation answer to the Sega Genesis. The Saturn was a total flop, and while I wouldn't say I hated it, I did always prefer the Genesis overall. So while I did play the Sega Saturn version of Daytona USA back when I was still in my single digits, I wanted to tackle the PC port instead given I find PC ports more interesting. Since they always vary in quality and can offer unique slash exclusive content on top of superior graphics. To which Daytona USA is indeed superior on PC, though the arcade version will remain supreme for obvious reasons. So let's get into Daytona USA for Windows computers and talk about if it's a game worth playing and worthy of its one of the greatest games of all time title. Gentlemen, start your engines. When it comes to controls, this game is pretty good. Of course, you will need to remap the keys, at least via the controller you have plugged in. But when it comes to the keyboard, this game plays as well as to be expected. Well, at least once you get used to the controls. I mean, we're playing a racing game with a keyboard here. And I didn't know what every key did till I looked at the mapped buttons and the options above the gameplay you see. Of course! One thing I didn't know about till looking into the bindings was different view options. So I just had to get back into the game and see what these were like. Well, they're your usual in front of car camera, far away camera, up close camera by default and a fake inside view type of camera, which I kind of like most overall, as I always preferred games that let me see within your cars. We have three race tracks to play with each one being a different degree of difficulty. The standard track, a more medium one with more sharp turns, and finally the rainbow road of this game with its length. On top of these tracks, there's two cars to play with. The red and blue standard car comes in manual shift and automatic, with a blue and green version being auto only. So pick whichever car works best for you, and let's get to racing. Track 1 is your typical NASCAR track with left turns galore and a sharp turn near the end. It's simple, small, and a standard fun experience. I like this one because it just works. There's nothing wrong with simplicity when it's done well, even though it took a while to get used to the sharp turn towards the end. Track 2 is one I don't like, in fact it's my least favorite track. Just look at the minimap in your lower right corner. It's just so fugly to look at, so many sharp turns. This course should be the hardest one, not the long track. That one is just long. But this is just bad, I hate it. Track 3 is supposed to be hard, but it's really not. I mean, it's long, but not that difficult as the medium track. 
I quite enjoy the city style one, though I do mess up and get put into the pit lane quite often. That of course will cost you dearly on this track given how far ahead everyone else can get in the time it takes you to get repairs. I never can catch back up because of this. So yeah sure this track is annoying but it's not bad or really difficult. I still hate track 2 most of all. Now list your, your name, name with the, the other, other champions. champions. Since Daytona USA was an arcade game, there's two modes available to play with difficulties in the settings with different names to increase the amount of laps. So we'll cover arcade mode first. This mode is your typical time based mode. You need to race through checkpoints and the finish line to increase your timer. If it reaches zero, game over. Doesn't matter what position you're in, doesn't matter if it's the final lap either, you just need to be as fast as possible. Which isn't that hard on the first track given its short length and simplistic layout. In fact, I did complete this mode on the beginner track. I honestly don't like timer based modes, though in this game, I kind of did. It wasn't a burden or a chore, it wasn't boring, it was actually kind of fun. Welcome to Victory Lane! You made, you made it. it. The only other game mode is PC mode, which is your normal racing experience. There's no timer here, just racing trying to get first place, to which is easier said than done depending on difficulty and track. So let's jump into the settings and switch to the other game modes. Though the label is quite misleading given you're still playing a normal race with just more laps. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. Grand Prix is just an additional few laps, like going from 8 to 10 for the beginner track. Other than that, it's just more racing with a few extra laps. Nothing else has changed. Though if you wanted to play a longer race, I guess this is a good option. This mode gives you more wiggle room for errors, so you can actually visit your pit crew to repair your car and still have a fighting chance at getting in the top 10 towards the end. last mode options is endurance. This mode truly earns its name as your required laps quadruple in size. From the standard 8, to the Grand Prix 10, to a whopping 80 just for the beginner track. Jesus Christ! Yeah I know right? Anyways, this one I wasn't even sure I wanted to actually play through, but I endured the nearly one hour it took on the beginner track. This was tense as no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't catch up and get past 9th place. I also finally started to nail the tight turn. Turns out, you just need to slow down at this point. Oh god. I mean, d does it though? For, for sure? Y you sure about that? It means that? Even if you mess up and need a head for your pit crew, 
you can still try to catch up, yet in the end, I did not. It was fun though, and I did not try this mode on the other two tracks, cause track 2 sucks, donkey doo doo. Meanwhile track 3 is too long for me, with a total lapse being 20. Again it's like poetry, so that they rhyme. The PC port is overall good, graphically this is the best port. Which isn't really hard given the game was only on the arcade, Sega Saturn, and Windows PC. By default, it was hard to figure out the controls. I was expecting to be able to use the mouse to navigate the menu above the game screen, which you cannot hide by the way. At least I haven't found a way, as I'd rather have a full screen game to play. A boy can dream. Turns out you need to use F10 and the arrow keys with ENTER to navigate everything. But this caused issues as every time I wanted to change any settings, the ENTER key would activate something in game. Because the game doesn't stop while you're navigating the UI. So if I wanted to restart the game, it would activate whatever it could in game, like going into a game mode or entering the main menu instead after leaving the title screen. It's annoying, but if you can work around it, then it's not a real problem. Of course, you cannot talk about Daytona USA without mentioning its amazing soundtrack from its iconic theme song. To the various other tracks like Rolling Start. Three, two, one, go! Plus, it's groovy, game over tune. Ten. It's all just so so good. But wait! There's more! You can also view rankings in all the modes and tracks. So of course you can expect most of the top scores belonging to the good old fashioned. Now, now list, list your, your name, name with the other, other champions. champions. A S S A S S, -S, -S. At the end of the day, Daytona USA is a great game that still holds up quite well. Sure, there is not much in the way of content, and graphically it's aged kind of poorly, but it's still eligible, as you can tell what you're looking at. No shit. But the music, controls, and overall quality fun helps to make this game worth playing. Many consider Daytona USA one of the greatest games of all time. Well, I'm inclined to agree. I haven't had this much fun playing the game in a while. Then again, I've taken a few days off to not produce any more reviews due to burnout and writer's block. Plus, the YouTube algorithm has declared a vendetta against me, with so many videos getting shadow banned from being seen by anyone. That is... that is fucked, man. This is actually fucked. You guys... do you guys... are you guys putting the pieces together? It reminds me of the glory days of when games were games, before graphic horrors took over everything and started forcing predatory microtransactions. Back when developers knew what they were doing, when developers were gamers, just like us. Now, now list, list your, your name, name with the other, other champions. champions. G. A. Y. G. A. Y. Well, this sure was a blast from the past. Hopefully you guys check out Daytona USA. Myabandonware.com hosts it, and it runs perfectly on Windows 10. 
Hey Sega, why not re-release this game? Anyways, that's it for this video. See you all later. Hopefully. Congratulations. Congratulations! You placed, you placed 10. 10. Now, list, list your, your name, name with the other, other champions. champions. D. E. M. D. E. M.